Hi, my name is Leila Felder. I'm 17 years old and I'm an avid art lover. Come join me as I talk with artists and curators about their art, their processes, and what makes them tick. Because we are in conversation. Thank you, I made them. Did you really? Joking, yeah. Okay, See? I can. <laughs> Sh shit, anything is possible right, in these, right. this house. Anything is possible. Right. I totally would have believed you. I, literally, I would have believed you too. Yes. And she was like, Annie, you made the chairs. Yes. So uh, I'm here with Maurice Evans. He is a fantastic, heckin' insane artist. Mm -hmm. um, you. You're welcome. It's all true. So I guess, like, did you, I guess when we started at the beginning, did you always know you wanted to be an artist? Yes, I did. I so did. you I always did. drew as a kid and everything? I did. Art school? I did. Where'd you go to art school? I went to the Art Institute of Atlanta. Ah, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So that was back in 1986. Uh -huh. That's when I came here. So I came here when I was 17, mm -hmm. and I turned 18 that, that October. Mm -hmm. And I came here to go to art school, but I initially came for animation, is what I wanted to do at first. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you want to work at Disney, or did you have any specific company in mind? I wasn't thinking about it, a particular company. I uh -huh. just loved the art form and all. I was always into animation. I was like, well, you know, let's do it, you know. And so when I got here, they uh, they ended the program. Right. Oof. <laughs> right. And so, um, you know, I'm young and uh -huh. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, you know, the first year, usually everybody does the same thing anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it was the second year where I, you, you choose your major, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I decided, well, I've always liked fashion. So let's get into fashion illustration. Hmm. So that's what I that's what my degree is in is fashion illustration. Really? Mm -hmm. For fashion illustration did you have to learn like anatomy and everything as well? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you so you actually have anatomy classes like right when you start school. Right? Oh, okay. So they give you a sketchbook and but the way they want you to do, to do anatomy is they want you to break the body down like and like you have your skeleton, mm -hmm. then your muscles underneath, I mean on top, and then on top of that you would do your skin. Mm -hmm. So you would have uh, overlays, so like trace of paper mm -hmm. over each level. Mm. Yeah, so it help you learn the body, how it works, the anatomy, and you know, how the bones work, how they fit in the sockets, and mm -hmm. all, all that stuff. Can you sew? Uh, <laughs> no. I have. I, let me change that. I can't. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm not the best. I learned how to do embroidery in mm -hmm. third grade, but that's, that's as far as my knowledge goes. Mm -hmm. So when did you start like doing, or how did you even get, you know, from fashion illustration into fine art? Mm -hmm. Did you start at a fashion company, you know, doing fashion illustrations for them? Or? No, so so I'll tell you a quick story. So when, right when I was about to graduate from, from the Art Institute, uh, our teacher decided to take us to a fashion show. Mm -hmm. And it was a fashion show by this famous designer, his name was Patrick Kelly at mm -hmm. the time. And he was like the hottest thing out. Mm -hmm. So he's all over the magazines, whether it was from Vogue to Essence, mm -hmm. right? And so I was familiar with his work. He was known for these big buttons he would do. Mm -hmm. And he himself would always wear these um, bicycle hats, like the racing bicycle hats. Ah, oh, got it, got it. The small hats with the little rim thing. And um, he always wore that in overalls, uh -huh. right? 
so anyway, um, we went to the fashion show, mm -hmm. but I noticed I was the only one who brought his portfolio with me. Mm -hmm. Right? I was like, I'm going to meet this man. Mm -hmm. Right? And so the show was over. It was a wonderful show. The show was over. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going home. I decided to stick around. Mm -hmm. And after a while, people were like, hey, you know, why are you still here? I said, I'm waiting on Mr. Kelly. So, oh, son, he's he's gone. He's been gone, right? And for whatever reason, I, I was like, I'm not leaving, right? And so this is a big deal for me because I'm actually really shy. Uh -huh. And so I stick around. Probably about an hour or so goes by. Mm -hmm. And then this do these doors open up and this whole entourage of people come out. And Patrick Kelly is in the center. And he's walking out. And I run up to him with my portfolio and say, uh -huh. hey, at the time, people knew me as Anthony. Hey, I'm Anthony. I'm a fashion illustrator. I would love for you to look at my portfolio, blah, 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 right? And he did this thing that I didn't expect. And he, he said, hey, y'all, because again, it's, it's a gang of people with him. He says, yeah. hey, I'm going to look at this young man's portfolio. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. So we went to the side, and he went through every piece that I had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It really blew me away. And he was like, yo, I really like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. He says, listen, when you graduate, call me. I'm going to, I want you to move to New York and I'm going to hook you up with all the people you need to know. I was like, cool. Right? So I'm, I'm like on high. Bruh. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, I couldn't wait. So like I said, it was almost time for me to graduate. Mm -hmm. And then Patrick Kelly passes away. Yeah, because this is, you know, people are still dying from AIDS and uh -huh. stuff like that back then. So, that, I didn't have the confidence to just move to New York without any contacts or anything. Yeah. So, that probably stopped me from going to fashion. Mm -hmm. And because I lived in Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, I ended up doing commercial art again, mm -hmm. which wasn't my favorite. Mm -hmm. right? So doing that, and then uh, I ended up doing medical illustrations, right, mm -hmm. for about a year or so. Yeah. And then the... Uh, so there just was, like normal medical diagrams that you see in doctor's offices? So medical illustrations would be like, uh, sort of like I, like I was telling you before, so like illustrations of the anatomy, mm -hmm. right? But now you use medical illustrations for procedures. Mm -hmm even court cases. Mm. So let's say you go to a hospital, mm -hmm. you, you want a particular surgery done, mm -hmm. and let's say they botch up your surgery. Mm. So now you, you, you're trying to sue them, now you gotta go to court, mm -hmm. right? So how are you going to explain what was done to you to the layman? Because mm. these, you know, people in the, um, your jury probably isn't in the medical field. Yeah. So here's where the medical illustration would come around it was like okay cool you know what part so how was the surgery done so we would show pre and post-op surgery ah, and it, illustrate it. that uh -huh. and then we would have uh, overlays uh -huh. with acetate where you could label where the doctor went wrong and you can label parts so you can really explain to the jury what happened okay and you can show it in stages mm. right so I did that for, like I said, for like a year. It was mm -hmm. interesting, you know, mm -hmm. I, really interesting. And so um, that was very stressful too. There was a lot of deadlines. Mm -hmm. Every day was a deadline. I'm sure. And so um, Desert Storm happened. This is way before you're born. So <laughs> Desert Storm happens. There's a war going on. Right? Oh, okay. And so a lot of sh companies are downsizing. Yeah. So I got laid off. Mm -hmm. Then um, I went to bus tables. In restaurants, you know, wow. I was doing that, and then um, a fellow roommate—not roommate, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that—a fellow classmate, mm -hmm. Grace Kisa, mm -hmm. says, "Hey, there's a job opening where I work. Mm -hmm. You're doing fine art, you know, work every day, mm -hmm. and they're selling this work to whether it's galleries, hotels, mm -hmm. or wholesalers, whatever. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I paint all day, every day." It's like really, 
says, yes, you should come through. So I, I went and uh, interviewed with the, the owner. He says, hey, bring me back a painting. Mm -hmm. So I went back home, did a painting, brought it to him. He says, cool, you're hired. So I did that for the next mm, three, three and a half years or so. It must be kind of nice being able to just paint every day. and. Oh, it was cool, but it was a job. Mm -hmm. You know, now I was hired to, I don't know what the official title would be, but mm -hmm. so different artists at that place had like, think of it like a line. Mm -hmm. They had their own line of images. Mm -hmm. So some artists would do abstracts, some artists did figurative works, some mm -hmm. did more conceptual things, right? Mm -hmm. And so because they would get like large orders for artwork, mm -hmm. the artist couldn't possibly do all those paintings or art pieces within a month, yeah. right? So that's what I would come in. Mm -hmm. I would learn how to do your work. Now, would aid you in uh, getting your order done. Got it. So let's say you're you're working there, uh -huh. and let's say you land a a two hundred job a 200 order for one of your pieces. Now the thing about that is, what was interesting is you're not duplicating the pieces. Mm -hmm. They're one of a kind pieces, mm -hmm. but they're in the same series. Mm -hmm. So they have to have similarities, Yeah. but they can't be the same. Uh -huh. You understand? Yeah. So, but you can't get it done. So you would say, hey, Maurice, mm -hmm. can you do the backgrounds for me? Mm -hmm. Sure, how do I do them? Mm -hmm. So you would sit down with me and say, okay, do this, do this, do that, do that, do that. And once you get to this stage, you leave it alone, I'll do the next stage. So I did that, it's like assembly line sort of, sort mm -hmm. of uh, work. Yeah. I did that for like three and a half years and mm -hmm. learning different artist styles and helping them complete their works. Yep, so I did that and then after that, I decided I wanted to go out on my own, mm -hmm. and so that's what I did. Nice. Mm -hmm. That is insane. I just sort of thought you went, you know, art school and then just like right out, just started doing fine art, somehow got somewhere, mm -hmm. but wow, mm -hmm. that's insane. Yeah, there's many, people don't think about the different types of jobs you can do as an artist, uh -huh. right? So there's no one path to any place is many paths yeah right um, I've always enjoyed being an artist so you know I was it didn't really matter you know but once I started doing it I started to discover I don't like this mm. or I don't like that mm -hmm. I prefer this mm -hmm. over that mm -hmm. you know so I started moving towards creating my own work I got tired of doing stuff for people mm -hmm. right it's irritating. Yeah. It's most of the time people don't know what they want. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and then they want you to figure it out. Uh -huh. I'm like, you know, I'm an artist. I'm not a mind reader. Yeah. So it's frustrating when you're doing trying to do something for someone. Mm -hmm. Because they can tell you what they don't like. They can't tell you what they like. Yeah. yeah. That must have helped you, or I don't know, maybe it didn't. But did that help you figure out like? different styles or sort of help expand your vision of like different ways that art could be done since you're, you know, imi imitating so many other people's styles for different things? Like did that expand your viewpoint at all really? Yes. Yes it did. I mean, you know, the advantage of that is working with different artists. Everybody has a completely different style, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, it's a different approach even. So when I, when I worked that place, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to hand me a set of brushes, mm -hmm. some pencils, and some paint, and do my thing, right? Mm -hmm. No, they handed me, you know, uh, spatulas and mm -hmm. rollers, mm -hmm. uh, knives. So all these, untra you know, untraditional tools to make art. Mm -hmm. And then they, they, the thing I can, I can credit them. Mm -hmm is every now and then for like a week they would tell the artist just create something mm -hmm. something different right mm -hmm. use whatever you want and so there was that 
time where you could just explore mm -hmm. and try different things and see what you could come up with. I found that very, very interesting, very fun. That helps expand because now you're not trapped into even your own style. Because yeah. a lot of artists get trapped in their own style. They'll, they'll come up with a style that's very successful uh -huh. or says what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And then 10 years late, ten year later, 10 years later, they're still doing the same thing. Yeah. Right? And then they can't get out of it. Yeah. You do, like, so many different things so well. Oh, thank you. I, it's not <laughs> flattery. It's just facts. You, you can paint. You do watercolor. You can sketch insanely well. You're great with colored pencils. You can do, like, film. You can edit. You just... How... <laughs> Do you do all of these things so well? How did you even like get curious about about film? Are you just like do you just like to discover new things every day? It's all art. <laughs> it's all art, though. Uh huh. Right. So everything is creativity. Uh huh. Right. So once you are into one medium maybe even master that, mm -hmm. then you'd be surprised how everything else starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. So even if you're a painter, mm -hmm. right, you understand composition, mm -hmm. right? You understand light. Yeah. You understand focal, the focal point of the, of the piece. You understand how to lead the eye through the piece. Mm -hmm. You understand all those things. So now let's jump into film. Mm -hmm. Now I understand competition when I look through the viewfinder. Oh. Right? I understand light, how it, how it interacts with the lens, and how it looks on the scan, and so forth and so on. Right? So literally, it really translates. It's just me changing the tool. It's the same thing. So with film, you, you, ha you have the technical stuff that you need to learn. Mm -hmm. But once you get that, then it's like, oh, okay. It's like... You got it. It's like painting, or it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like anything, you know, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. hard to explain, but once you, I'm telling yeah. you, once you get that one thing, mm -hmm. then everything else starts to make sense. So that's why sometimes you'll see uh, musicians mm -hmm. that paint. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Sometimes you see painters that are musicians, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you see, you see actors mm -hmm. who paint. <laughs> Actors who become photographers, that's an easy transition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same same sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah. So what does like a typical, I don't know, if you're making a piece for an exhibition, or even when you were working on um, uh, the New Africans, what was a typical just day of painting, if you have a typical day of painting? Like what was, what's your process like? Because um, you also worked with Grace on that, was it, you know, were you guys working literally together most of the time or do you just kind of like do your own thing and then, I don't know, or agree beforehand what stuff you're going to do together and what stuff you're not going to do together? Like how does that all... <laughs> right. right. So, you're talking about collaboration. Yeah. So, I think Grace and I collaborate pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, I think we do because we respect each other's art. Mm -hmm. You know, I know she's a great artist. Yeah. It's no question. I know whatever she's going to do is going to be quality, mm -hmm. innovative. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and at the same time, sometimes, um, you know, when someone can do something really well, mm -hmm. you step back. You know, you don't get in the way of it. Mm -hmm. And they do the same thing for you. They think that the part that you do very well, they, they step back. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I don't contribute to whatever she's doing mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. She may say, hey, I like that, but could you try this? Or mm -hmm. even when I'm shooting, she's like, you're not getting this angle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because I'm kneeling and she's standing somewhere. She's like, you, I think you should look at this angle too. Mm. Right, so she's not trying to step overstep me. Mm -hmm. She's just giving me a suggestion, and sometimes I take it, and sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. Right, and vice versa. Sometimes I'm looking at what she's doing. It's like, I like that, but had you thought of adding this element to it, or 
that element to it. Mm. And sometimes she's like, hmm, that's interesting. And sometimes she's like, mm, uh, <laughs> I'm good on that. Uh -huh. you know? But we allow each other space. Yeah. And we can critique each other. Uh -huh. It's not we're tearing each other down. We're we're uh, giving each other constructive criticism mm -hmm. to help each other get to the next level and the next level, right? Because mm -hmm. the goal is to get better. Yeah. Right. So, like, if you take one of the ones from here, maybe this one. Mm -hmm. How did you both do this? So, like, I know Grace did the costumes, and then you took the photo. Did either like? Either of you helped her contribute to the pose, or mm -hmm. you know, and then who did the photo editing and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what happens is um, I've sketched out something. Mm -hmm. So I'll sketch out a figure, and I may say, "Grace, can you decorate the body like this?" Okay. Or can you add this? Uh -huh. But sometimes I'll flip through a magazine and say, "You know, can we do the makeup where it feels like this?" Uh -huh. Right. And so we'll agree on what we think will look best for a particular model because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. The skin tone is different and everything. Mm -hmm. And so she'll come up with all these really creative costumes. And so a lot of times I just don't bother with that. I'll step back because mm -hmm. she has really great ideas. Yeah. And then um, for me, I knew what I wanted the models to feel like. Mm -hmm. So even though they are some nude and some partially nude, this wasn't about sex mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. So I didn't want anything sexy. So mm -hmm. you'd be amazed. People came in and they thought it was going to be the sexy pose thing. I'm like, no, it's, it's not. It's not that at all. Yeah. The concept is um, women who are strong, mm -hmm. right? Who can take care of themselves, their families. They can defend themselves mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. And um, I wanted these uh, powerful, iconic women, mm -hmm. right? So this is about. Um, exuding power. Mm -hmm. It's not about, even though sex, we can we can consider that a power, mm -hmm. but that's not what we're going for. Yeah. Um, so that's why you see some of the, the poses the way they are. They look very regal, very strong. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's on purpose because that's what we was, that's what we were trying to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, once Grace does the makeup and the and the body art so sometimes she'll put gold leaf on them mm -hmm. sometimes she'll literally put like little studs on them mm -hmm. she'll do all kind of interesting things sometimes i'm painting on them mm -hmm. as well and then once we're satisfied with how that looks we come we usually sit up in our living room where we are now just <laughs> move the couches out of the way put the backdrop uh -huh. set up the lights nice. and then turn on the, turn on some music and we go to work nice and so once that's happening then it's like, okay, I'm giving direction. Uh -huh. Think of this. Mm -hmm. Think of that. Mm -hmm. The look I want is this. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're li literally trying to figure out what I want. And then yeah. we we'll start to get into a rhythm. Because when, you, when, you, when you're shooting someone, there's a synergy that's happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a second for us to get there because we don't know each other. Yeah. Right? And so I have to make you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right? And so uh, we just start chipping away at it. And then eventually it starts to work. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think we had a bad session with anyone. And none of them are professional models. Maybe except for maybe two, maybe. Yeah. Everybody else was, they just, you know, I don't even want to call them regular. They, mm -hmm. they were not models. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, we just did that and had a good time. You know, they would tell me, if they needed some sort of music to mm -hmm. put them in a certain type of mood, mm -hmm. I would find that music. Mm -hmm. um, very aggressive music a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, whatever it took to get the shot is what we, is what we did. Nice. Mm. And then, so you did all of like the, the designs here? Yeah, so once the photo is done, now we go into the editing stage. Uh -huh. So now I'm going through and I'm trying to figure out do I want the skin to look realistic or do I want it to look, you know, otherworldly? Mm -hmm. So I may add a blue tint to it or mm -hmm. a purple tint to it or something. Or I may make it super dark mm -hmm. because I'm trying to show off the muscles in the, in the body or mm -hmm. whatever. Then we just figure out the best thing and then we print those and then we mount them on wood, 
Right. Once we mount it on wood, now the game changes. Changes. Mm -hmm. Now I can do anything at this mm -hmm. point. So, do I create an atmosphere for it? So I'm looking at the modern. What do I see? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm thinking about. And so I go on on that. Mm -hmm. So um, these are actually paint pens that I came back and oh. did my line work. Yeah. And then um, yeah, same up here. Uh huh. Same here. Right. What kind of paint is that? Because it looks like watercolor. This is watercolor. You can watercolor on wood? Okay, so so what we did here was, no, you can't watercolor on wood. You can, uh -huh. but um, actually you can. You, you can. Huh. Now, what you could do uh -huh. is you could get wood and you can treat it with, um, it's called a watercolor ground. Uh -huh. Actually, you can put down on the wood Yeah. and then you can paint it uh -huh. if you wanted to. But it has a little bit of a texture that I personally don't like. Yeah. So what I did was I mounted watercolor paper mm, on wood. Got it. Then mounted my piece on there, the mm -hmm. photograph. Then I painted. Nice. Make sense now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I did. Some of them don't have paint at all. Some uh -huh. of them silver leafed. Wow. Right? Is it that's hard to put on silver leaf? Uh, yes, in a way, because it, it depends on how detailed it is. Uh -huh. So you have to put down these, what's called sizing first, uh -huh. which is like a, like a glue. Uh -huh. So if you got a little details, now you need to pull out a detail brush uh -huh. to get the little details in there so it can dry. Because uh -huh. you're literally going to take the leaf and put it on top and then rub it away. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So it needs to adhere to the places that you want the silver leaf to be. So you mm -hmm. need to make sure there's enough glue there and it's mm -hmm. tacky. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, it's a little bit of a process, but very cool once you do it. Yeah. Yeah. It can be a little pain, but yeah. represent metal. Mm. So, you know, the continent of Africa is mm -hmm. the most, you know, rich. Sources, resources that we have on the planet. Mm -hmm. So they have the coal tan, the silver, the platinum, and the gold, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. right? So that's why I use that in the, in the pieces. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love this series so much. It is so. Oh, thank you. It's so beautiful and regal and powerful. Thank you. Without being aggressive, you know? It mm -hmm. Rather than like, I'm powerful, it just emanates, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're an amazing artist, and I have so much respect for you. Like, <laughs> words cannot express. I look up to you so much. And I have respect for you. No. I do. Go on. Mm. <laughs> You're so advanced for, for a young lady. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I try, and thank you so much for, like, all of the advice and the learning materials and just, yeah, the permission to, like, let go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's... I think that's the key. Yeah. So it happens to us all. Mm -hmm. It happened to you, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, you get into a rhythm of something, mm -hmm. and then if you're not careful, you, you get stuck there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to step away. Yeah. Or shake it off and go, uh, mm -hmm. let's do something else. Let's do something yeah. different. Let's do something I've never done before. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not my medium, mm -hmm. or maybe it's not the subject matter that I'm, I'm most comfortable with. So sometimes you have to do things that are uncomfortable mm -hmm. so you can grow. Yeah. Then you just do it. So like, you know, Grace, she's, you know, I'm, I've known her as a painter. And then one day she's like, I'm not painting anymore. It's like, what do you mean you're not going to paint anymore? It's like, I'm, I'm going to do this three-dimensional sculpture. Like, mm -hmm. really? Wow. It's like, yeah. It's like, okay. Hmm. And so that's what I'm saying. So she didn't allow herself to, when she, found, when she felt stuck, she decided uh -huh. to do something else. Yeah. And now, you know, it's amazing to see what she does. What she's done. Yeah. Because I, I remember when she first started doing it. Mm -hmm. And to watch an artist evolve is a treat. Yeah. You know, and you get so to cool see it over, over years. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mm. Is there a medium you don't like? I'm not crazy about pastels. Mm, me neither. <laughs> it's not my thing. You yeah. know, I can do them. Yeah. But not, it's not, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can do without it. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not a big fan of charcoal either. It's so messy. It is messy. Yeah. So I do like um, 
ebonite pencils and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, charcoal is cool. It is messy. Yeah. And you don't want to breathe it, breathe it in. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like the messy mediums like that where it's powdery and it's, yeah. No, yeah. Not my thing. Yeah. Do you have a favorite medium, or is that asking about like a favorite child? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah. I like, uh, I mostly do acrylics most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I love watercolor. Yeah. Right? Even though I don't really sell a lot of watercolor paintings per se, because mm -hmm. you know, they end up being mixed media pieces at the end. Mm -hmm. But I do like the medium. I like that it forces you to let go because you can't necessarily yeah. control it. Yeah. You understand it and you understand what it may or may not do mm -hmm. and you just let it do what it's going to do and try to contain it somehow Yeah. or not. You have to go with the flow literally. Go with the flow <laughs> and then it's what it, what it is. Like I love that. I love yeah. not knowing exactly how it's going to be at the end. Mm -hmm. I, again, once you know the medium, you know I can add salt and salt is going to do mm -hmm. this or I can add this and it will react to that. What does salt do? Oh. I mean, <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> so yeah, so if you want to create um, like this texture, uh -huh. sort of like a texture, mm -hmm. it's an effect, more, more of an effect. Mm -hmm. So you can lay down your color, mm -hmm. right? And so let's say you take blue or whatever and you lay it down. Mm -hmm. and then you can come back and add some salt on top. Mm -hmm. What happens is the salt absorbs the moisture mm -hmm. and it starts to pull. So it leaves little spots and little interesting patterns on your mm -hmm. paper. You let it dry and then when it's dry you wipe it off. Huh. Yeah. I'm gonna try that sometime. You should try it. Yeah, because now I'm very curious. I didn't Even know. do you mask your painting sometime? I just started Doing all the, I don't know what is wrong. So masking, same thing. So you can get um, this is a solution. It feels like a, a glue. It smells horrible, mm -hmm. but you paint it. You would paint it, and paint it in places that you don't want paint to be. Does mm -hmm. it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes with watercolor, you want some of the paper to actually stay white. Ah, uh, got it. Right. So you can add. You can paint on those places that you want to be white. Uh -huh. Then you can do your watercolor on top. It's uh -huh. not going to affect that, but it will affect the rest of the paper. Hmm. So you can do things in layers. That's cool. I'll show you. I'll show you an example of that. But you can do things in layers. So let's uh -huh. say you want to do a pattern, for example, uh -huh. right? And let's say it's supposed to be in two different shades of blue, uh -huh. right? So you can paint the first shade of blue. Uh -huh. Then do your mask. Mm -hmm. It can be a pattern or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then paint the darker shade of blue. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, I got Let it. Let everything dry. Yeah. Peel away the mask. Uh -huh. And what's revealed is the, the layer beneath. Yeah, it's an interesting technique to achieve all kinds of things. You yeah. know? I'll show you that. But yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You, you get to play. And it's, it's not a terribly expensive medium mm -hmm. at all. Uh, you can find good water paper, watercolor paper in mm -hmm. most places. And it doesn't take much to do it. You just need some watercolor brushes, some water, and a towel, and you're good to go. Nice. Yeah, and, and you can get little palettes, and you can put them in your pocket, and put them in your car. It can just be there. Yeah. So if you're waiting on somebody at the airport, you can pull mm -hmm. your little... You know? Yeah, the little box. Maurice has the <laughs> coolest box. It's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of like an embroidery box. Um, but You should just show it. Oh, yeah, do you have it's it? It's a cigar box. It's a cigar, it, yeah, cigar Chris, box. Can you bring it? It's actually right, it's right there. It's right, no, come here, come closer. It's right there. This thing is so cool. So, oh, yeah. so again, y'all, this is, this is, Cigar, a cigar box, right? Um, a lot of artists do this. So I'm not the only one, but what I thought was cool is you can kind of make it the way you want. So inside, we've made it where you have an easel right here. This lifts up and down. You can put your paper here if you like. So let's say you put your paper here. Okay. Then uh, here, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
here is where you could put your watercolor in here, right? Then here are actually little fountain pens, right? This right here is a palette to, to, to mix your colors in right here, right? And they actually can come out. You can pull these things out. Can you wash these easily? Yeah, yeah, you can. So you can actually pull this out, pull it to the side. You can put some brushes here. Same thing, this comes out, goes to that side. And then this lifts up. Then you literally can just paint. And, you, and what's cool is it's just a little box. And you can keep it in a car or wh wherever. And you can literally have a full easel watercolor workstation, if you will. You can be right there, right? And what's cool about it is you just come back, put everything back together, fold it up. Do this, and before you know it, no one knows what it is. It just looks like a cigar box, right? And you can, um, this is just, um, what do you call these things? Clipboard. Clipboard yeah. that I cut down to fit inside here. So it actually fits inside. So I can actually put it up there, clip my paper there, or if I want to, I can just hold it and paint either way. And even cut out of the knot so you can grab it out of the thing. Real cool. So you know, being an artist is just being creative. You know, it's just a, it's just a tool. Thank you. So Maurice, um, when I when we look at your artwork, we've been through your archive, which is uh, it's an unbelievable body of work because you've been painting for like twenty five years. Mm, longer than that. Wow. And when you look at your work, you have distinct. You have distinct styles, like all of your work does not look the same. All of it is very skilled, but it really does not look the same at all. Like how do you, how do you explain that? And um, how do you just go from one style to a different style to a different style? Hmm. So you just asked a question about the different styles that I have, or the range of style that, that I have. And I will say that that would be one of the criticisms that I've gotten mm -hmm. is people feel like I have too many styles. Um, they like artists to be in this little box. They want to be able to say this is his style and that's who he is, period. Right. I've always thought that was ridiculous, actually, because I'm like, you know, it's like a again a food reference it's like food right yeah sometimes I don't feel like Italian today mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like Jamaican sometimes I feel like Thai mm -hmm. right and they're different yeah right so why do I have to paint the same style every time I don't want to yeah. part of part of being an artist is exploring you know can I I've mastered that style and it's cool I've done it can we do something else mm-hmm you know, let's try a different palette. People know me for these brilliant, bright colors. Let's do something muted, mm. right? Let's only let's do a limited palette. We only have three colors that we can use. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's limit the the the, uh, the materials that I can work on. We're not going to work on canvas. Yeah. You know what can we do? Mm -hmm. um, that's part of what, to me, art is. So, even um, artists like Picasso had his different periods, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does he get criticized? Does he get criticized for having a blue period? No, because he's versus his so. versus his uh the Cubans Cuba style. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then he was a ceramicist, he did ceramics. Right, he did so. ceramics. And he did sculpture too. Yeah, he, he did, did sculpture. some sculptures as well, yeah. Right. So it's it's you see how ridiculous that would be to right. criticize yeah. him for to make him do one thing. All the different types of art that he does. Yeah. But we do it so easily. We criticize people um, for doing it. It's, it's, there's a commercial angle to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a commercial angle to that. You know, it's about being recognizable. Um, but if you're a true artist, yeah. it starts to eat at your soul. You don't, you don't. Constricting. Yes, it's exactly. You got yeah. Constricting over there, but yes. Yeah. But it's, um, so just like, you know, I don't know how many roles you've done so far, mm -hmm. right? Acting. Mm -hmm. But let's say you keep getting the same role over again. Mm -hmm. 
and let's say you've been studying and practicing and just trying to get better and you know you're better yeah right but every time I get cast it's for the same role that I've mastered and I understand why they keep asking me to do it because I do it so well yeah but I do other things maybe just as good or even better but I'm not getting a chance because you've pigeonholed me and put me in this you've typecast me and put me yeah. in this one thing right so that's important that you don't get caught up in it. Yeah. Right. So you see a lot of child actors do really extreme things mm -hmm. to try to prove I'm not the little kid anymore. Like Miley Cyrus. Right. I'm an adult now. Mm -hmm. I want to do these other roles. Yeah. Right. Because that's what they're fighting. They're fighting the mm -hmm. public, trying to pigeonhole them. They, the public will do it to you. You know, they'll say, just like for me, I did the series of jazz paintings in the early '90s. And people think that's all I did, mm -hmm. you know. But I've never just done one thing. I've always done the abstracts and the yeah. conceptual work. I've always done those things. Mm -hmm. But there was a section of my my clientele they got stuck on a particular style. Mm -hmm. And even now, to this day, I'm, ta I'm talking about these pieces I created in 1994. Mm -hmm. Some people still ask me about those pieces <laughs> in the way in 2020. Yeah, literally. So it's like, hmm, I must have did a really good job mm -hmm. on them. But it made a really lasting impression. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's good. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm so different from when I was in 1994. Yeah, as you should be. As you should be, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, so I've done different things. Um, I like different styles. And if you look at my background, you can see you can see why so mm -hmm. i told you I, I, I love comics comic books yeah i got into fashion mm -hmm. so now my figures are elongated mm -hmm. versus proportional yeah right uh color started changing mm -hmm. um, music started to influence me mm -hmm. all kind of things you know um, meeting artists from different places yeah uh even when i went to art school there was an artist uh i forget his name i think his name was michael though uh, he says, yo, man, I, I want to show you this technique. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, what, what is it? He says, okay, so this is what you do. Mm -hmm. He says, you take oil paint, because mm -hmm. we was taking an oil painting class. He said, you take two different colors. You put one next to the other, mm -hmm. and you take a dry brush, mm -hmm. right? And you, you do this between the two colors, mm -hmm. and it blends them. And I was like, oh! Whoa! When he did it, it was so masterful. Wow. And I picked that technique up from because he, he gave it to me, shared yeah. it to me, and I took it and ran with it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people, some people think some of the acrylic paintings that I'm doing, they think they're oil paintings mm -hmm. because of the way they're blended, but they're not. Mm -hmm. I just stole the technique from that and added mm -hmm. it to something else, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't want to keep rambling, but I'm just saying, it's, you know. Yeah. I don't believe in being restricted when it comes to art. Yeah. It's against my my art religion. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think I think that's totally. I mean, because you do. It's not like you do a bunch of styles poorly. You do all of them really well. Thank you. So, and it reminds me of something that Helen Mirren said. I remember I was watching one of her master classes on like the master class website, and she says. Um, I always try to do something completely different from the last role that I got. Because mm -hmm. when you think about it, you can't really typecast Helen Mirren. You can't say this is the type of role that she does. She was like, you know, I, I did something and people are like, but you should do it again because you did it well. She's like, yeah, I did do it well. But I can other, also do other things well. And I would like to try doing other things. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that should definitely apply to, I mean, it applies fine to writing, it applies fine to poetry. I think mm -hmm. it should definitely apply find visual art. Mm. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> dropping knowledge. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I think that's basically, is there anything else that you want to say? <laughs> I don't think so. Words of wisdom? Words of wisdom? Like if somebody in the audience wanted to like, got inspired and they want to become an artist tomorrow, is there like a top couple tips you just want them to keep in mind or something? Hmm. Is to always be. Um, is to always learn new things. Mm -hmm. So always, 
keep the thirst for wanting to learn new things. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I was uh, younger than you, mm -hmm. I was I was always in the library. Yeah, I was always checking out books on art. It could mm -hmm. be anatomy, perspective, or whatever. And I constantly check those books out. Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, that was one of the ways I learned. I learned through and from other artists. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, when people aren't guarded, this one is fun, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of times artists can be very guarded. Yeah. They don't want to <laughs> let the secrets out. And sometimes artists can be lazy. Don't be lazy. Mm -hmm. Inspiration is not copying. People think that's what that is. You know? yeah. it's, it's not that. It's like if you're ever around another artist and they make you want to go create, that's mm -hmm. inspiration. Yeah. Not to copy what you just saw yeah. them do. You want to create your own techniques. Mm -hmm. um, you just want to do your own thing. So that's why it helps sometimes just to be around other creatives. Because when you find yourself yeah. in a rut, you be around other creatives and it's like, ah, oh, get that energy again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do what they're doing. But I want to feel that creativity too. Yeah. What can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, so it can be anything. It could be, um, you pull the inspiration from anywhere. I tend to pull it from uh, music, mm -hmm. actually. I can see a great film. Mm -hmm. It makes me want to paint or mm -hmm. create. Um, I can hmm, have great food. Mm -hmm. it makes me want to create. Because it's art. Yeah. It's still another artist. It's a chef. He's mm -hmm. an artist. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing. So it could be anything. Mm -hmm. It could be life. It can be conversation, because that's how these pieces start. Mm -hmm. Simply from a conversation between Grace and I. It can be um, hmm, just life. It yeah. can be looking out the window and watching how people move. Yeah. This observation. Mm -hmm. It's really what art is. Yeah. It's, it's observation. So you just. You you take it all in. You you're a student of life and nature and things. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's your job is to is to keep learning and keep filling yourself up with inspiration. And some stuff doesn't happen tomorrow. You know, you're you you see something. Mm -hmm. You're inspired by it, but it may not come out for another five years. Yeah, ten years even. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, that thing I was trying to do. Because I've done that too. Like, I've had yeah. these really great ideas start on a painting mm -hmm. and get stuck. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, hmm, maybe I don't have the skills to do what I want to do yet. Mm -hmm. And I've done that. I've set paintings aside. Five years goes by. Come back, hmm. Because <laughs> it took. The, you know those five years and whatever else happened to me to mm -hmm. to give it what it needed and now it's done yeah so that can happen um, so many things in so many ways it's, uh, you just have to be open I don't like that we get we get told what to do mm -hmm. and that's where we stay mm -hmm. right yeah so that's why I'm very careful with you when I'm telling you mm -hmm. I always tell you this is not, don't limit yourself by what I'm saying. Just mm -hmm. actually be better off to take what I'm saying and you take it to the next level. And then I told you to do what? I said, you should come back and teach me. Because mm -hmm. you should have learned something that I don't know. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And so once you teach me, and I'm just like, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What if we do this and this, this, and that? Then I take it to this level and then I mm -hmm. give it back to you. It should be this back and forth. Like, it should be. Like a ton as much. Should be. But like when the ball gets bigger. <laughs> exactly. So that's why, you know, you also as an artist, you should be um, very aware of the other creatives that you keep around. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, when you're around the right group, everybody wants to see everybody win. Yeah. You know, there's no, I'm jealous of what you're doing. And yeah. No. Hey, there's an opportunity, you know, for this um fellowship over here you should mm -hmm. try it yeah it's an opportunity for this commercial over here you 
I don't think I'm the best one for it. Mm -hmm. I think you're better for it. Mm -hmm. So we do that all the time. Yeah. You know, we exchange and tell each other things that may help each other. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's some of the advice that I would give. Did you catch that? <laughs> Thank you very much, Maurice. This was amazing, and I am very inspired by you, honestly. Thank you for having me. Mm. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank, thank you for letting us into your house. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> this house is made by Maurice and Grace. <laughs> Literally, everything in it. Right. He builds it. Even the plumbing is artistic. Yes. <laughs>